Welcome to Martial Arts Today, a program dedicated to the ancient fighting arts of the Orient, designed to give you insights into the history, philosophy, styles, and celebrities of the martial arts. And now, your host, Joe Rebello. Hi, this is Joe Rebello, and welcome to Martial Arts Today. We've got a real special episode for you today with Shihan Gino Crotella from Naples, Florida. Shihan Crotella, a veteran in the martial arts, in the point fighting as well as full contact realm, has been involved with the martial arts for going on 25 years now. Uh, being involved in various Kempo systems as well as the White Dragon Kung Fu system, he's going to give us some of his insights into the aspects of point fighting, freestyle, and sparring in the martial arts. It'll give you a rare insight into the offensive and defensive aspects of sparring with another opponent. Stay tuned for a lot of action happening here on Martial Arts Today. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Joe Rubella, and we're back with more action here on Martial Arts Today. And we're here with Shihan Gino Crotella, all the way from Naples, Florida. And he's here to uh, visit with the World White Dragon Kung Fu Society, and also to work with the various members on fighting and sparring principles. Shihan Crotella, first of all, it's a pleasure meeting you, sir. Great to meet you, Joe. Uh, sir, uh, again, we, first of all, we wanted to talk to you a little bit about your martial arts career and how you got involved in the arts. Uh, now, how did you start up in the martial arts? Uh, I was in high school, Joe, and uh, I moved from a um, ethnic Italian area, Federal Hill, way out to the country, and there weren't any Italians out there. Mm -hmm. So I learned to fight at a very early age. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a little boxing experience and uh, at a school dance I got in a fight with a, a, a young boy my age I was in about maybe the 10th grade or so and his name was Tommy Connolly mm -hmm. and uh, I thought I gave him a pretty good run up until he started kicking me and I said I gotta learn this stuff because I caught a good beating that day so that's when I decided I was gonna learn karate because I caught a real good beating and I thought I was a pretty good fighter up until that time so wow. it developed an interest right away now um, when you got when you got involved in the martial arts who did you first train with and study with I started training uh, with a man by the name of Jorge Serafin mm -hmm. I trained with him for about six years and then um, I met Link Martin I was uh, about a purple belt back then and uh, I trained with Link Martin for a number of years, made a black belt with Link Martin, and right after that, in the early 70s, Grandmaster Bill Gregory, uh, we were friendly even before that, we knew each other, you know, before that. Uh, Grandmaster Gregory, he was sentient back then, and uh, I just started with him. Uh, he's seen potential in me, and I've seen a world of knowledge in him, and that's where I uh, finally was accepted by Grandmaster Dr. Daniel Kane Pai and I trained with him. Now, uh, again, what again? We had talked before about how you had started in the in the hard styles. Again, uh, Link Martin a show, at that time was a Shotokan stylist, oh, very, correct? Very tough stylist. Uh, the first dojo I trained in was like a cellar, and uh, no heat, one little light bulb, and uh, you'd actually see a rat run right across the the floor. So I mean. You know, things were, you know, I, I started it was a, it was hardcore. I started hardcore. Link was a real, real tough boy. He still is. He still is. Now, after you trained that, you mentioned that you had started training with uh, uh, Grandmaster Daniel Pai uh, from the White Dragon Kung Fu system. Yes, I did. Now, what was, again, Grandmaster Pai has passed away uh, recently, yeah, just this, two, years uh, two years ago. And uh, can, tell us a little bit about your training with uh, uh, Grandmaster Pai. Well, Grandmaster Pai uh, was a phenomenon in itself. I mean, he was just amazing. Uh, he never really taught any of his black belts the same exact thing. Um, my forte was fighting, and that's all he trained me on, fighting. Principles of fighting, the theory of fighting, the psychology of fighting, uh, how to speed up techniques. I mean, he baffled me. Uh, the man knew uh, techniques in Penjack Jockman, Penjack Salat. Uh, I mean, it's just endless, the knowledge this man had. And what he would do was, he would take a potpourri of everything. Whatever was, was the fastest, the most devastating, he would employ that. Mm -hmm. He would adapt your body to conform what you do best. You couldn't be an icon of him. Mm -hmm. In other words, he would take what you do best and exploit it. And it was just uh, a, one of the most 
richest experience of my life being, you know, training with him. Now, uh, again, he uh, he elated you to the status of Shihan, uh, yes, fifth degree did. black belt, and uh, you know, as you mentioned, your forte has always been fighting and and sparring. Yep. Now, uh, we were talking before about now. First of all, you're still actively competing. Yeah, I'm pushing fifty. You know, I'm running a couple of years away from it, and I am still actively fighting tournaments. Uh, not full contact anymore, mm -hmm. but I've competed with some of the better uh, competitors, especially. Uh, well, when I taught and had schools here in Rhode Island, uh, I fought pretty near just about everybody. Uh, now, down south, uh, I fought some pretty, pretty good guys. Uh, I competed with Herbie Thompson, Johnny Pravat. Uh, there's some big guns down there, and uh, it's a lot of fun. It's just a lot of fun. Now, uh, you've competed, of course, through the Fame uh, circuit yes, in fought, Florida. I fought that. Yeah, I fought Fame, FBBA, uh, any, anybody who had a tournament, you know, me and my people, that's all we do, so we love that. So, we're, we're always in the hunt. Now, uh, now you've mentioned over your career, I mean, you've, you've done all types of fighting. You mentioned before you've also done full contact oh, yeah. in the past, yeah, uh, point done, fighting. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've done kickboxing, I've done full con, you know, I've done full contact. Uh, I've done empty hand kumite, uh, absolutely no equipment whatsoever, uh, especially in the earlier years, you know, my, you know, as you get older now, you uh, hurt longer. In other words, <laughs> what the, you get hit, it would you know it'd sting you a little bit, but a day later it'd be better. Mm. Now you get hit. Three weeks later, you're saying, "Man, I still feel that," you know. So <laughs> now, uh, you know, we we talked about your fighting career a little bit, and uh, some of the luminaries that you've worked with in the past. Uh, again, you've met uh, Joe oh, Lewis, yeah, Don with, Wilson. Uh, yeah, yep, Donnie Wilson. Uh, I'm friendly with Donnie Wilson. Phenomenal, phenomenal man. Uh, great person. Great acting career, uh, but a tremendous fighter. He's got the heart of a lion. Uh, I've worked with Joe Lewis. Uh, Joe is a sensation in himself. Uh, a world book of knowledge. I mean, people think like he's punch drunk, but that's furthest from the truth. I mean, he's, he hits you, you are hit. You stay hit. And the man has lost nothing. Joe Lewis has lost absolutely nothing. Uh, Joe's uh, been to my school. I've been with him. I mean, great, great, great guy. Uh, I've been, you know, with Superfoot Wallace, exhibition boats. Uh, it's been, it's been a, a fun, it's really been a fun career. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, uh, you know, another thing that we wanted to talk, by the way, for, for the general public, um, again, many of you may be familiar with boxing's Joe Lewis. We're talking about karate's Joe Lewis, uh, L-E-W-I-S, who was the first world heavyweight uh, full contact kickboxing champion, as well as the one of the first heavyweight karate champions in the days when there was only, say, maybe was 10 only karate. Handful. There's only a handful. Yep. There's only maybe a handful of karate tournaments at that time, and when you were a world champion, you were a champion. Oh, yeah. There was no doubt about it. The rules, uh, the rules were next to nil back then, and uh, it was really hardcore. I mean, now they're wearing uh, eight ounce gloves, ten ounce gloves. All they wore full contact back then were just the tiny, tiny jewelry pads, uh, a couple ounces. That was it. Uh, tape the hands and go at it. Mouthpiece and a cup and see ya. Wow. That's it. Now, now tell us, you know, you're in the process of uh, putting together a series of seminars throughout the United States on your, your fighting principles. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I do a series. I have five different seminars. Uh, principles of, uh, of sparring, the theories, uh, how to successfully put together fighting combinations. Mm -hmm. I teach uh, strictly attacking by combination. That's one of the uh, basic setups that I start off with. I teach you how to successfully put together very effective fighting combinations. No one can duplicate what I do and nobody, everybody has strong points and weak points. Uh, through my seminars I can have a person take his strongest asset with a formula that I teach them and for the rest of their lives they can put some dynamic, very very dynamic uh, attacking combinations together. I'm one of the few martial artists from the old school where I'm a firm believer a strong attack is your best defense. I'm a, a, a strictly an offensive fighter. A uh, good offense I believe is better than a, a defense. Although counterfighting is another seminar that I do. Um, there's a formula that's used and uh, it's you know, when you get into, you know, set point, set point control, uh, you get into uh, clearing, penetration, bridging the gap, uh, there's a, a, a real nice formula. And uh, a little bit later on, I'll show you how to put it together. Fantastic. Well, we'll look forward to it. And uh, we'll be back with more action here on Martial Arts Today. And
we're back with more action, and we're going to be going over, uh, as you were talking to us before, about some of the common mistakes made during sparring. Well, Joe, the most common mistakes people make, believe it or not, even good black belt fighters, mm -hmm. uh, there's 21 generally mm -hmm. that they usually make. These are the most common mistakes. First of all, not sparring often enough mm. is one of the biggest mistakes. They may only spar maybe once a week. To keep really sharp, you need two to three good sparring sessions a week to keep very, very sharp. Timing, speed, coordination, mobility, uh, footwork drills, it's all very, very important to keep that up. Lack of effective footwork is probably the most blatant mistake. And that's why people get hit. Lack of proper footwork. Right, exactly. Um, that, that is a major factor in fighting. If you, if you can move around, you're less of a target. Mm -hmm. I have a rule I teach my students. If your feet aren't moving, your head's moving. Something is always in motion. Mm -hmm. um, another one is backing up when you're being attacked. For some weird reason, people fight very linear and they back right up when they're being attacked. I mean, yeah. instead of just using a little shift step or just a side step to skip back, uh, another big aspect is they don't know how to close the door when they're fighting. Uh, closing the door is a, a term that we use for when you're being attacked, they don't know how to close the door. Fight backing up. Right. They just don't know how to fight when they're backing up. Now the, now the door also refers to uh, the center line. Closing exactly. The center, exactly. 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 Points. exactly right. Exactly right. Exactly right. 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 Yeah, because another common mistake, you hit right almost on a head jump. They fight mostly on one side. Either their speed side forward or their power, power side, side forward. Uh, thing. Then they overreact and they overreach on every block. Whereas that's when they're really hit. Mm -hmm. I teach one aspect. You never just fire off. You set your man up. Mm -hmm. No matter what you do, you set your man up right. before you execute anything. Right. And what they do, they overreach on their blocking. They, um, they sucker in. Uh, a lot of times I'll throw a shot wanting you to block it, hoping you're going to just overreach or overreact to it to set you up to get in. Uh, another mistake that they make, there's too much time between their blocking and the hitting. There's a terrible time lag. But they'll block or they'll block and then it's almost like a slow motion, then they'll hit instead of bang, bang right off the right off the guard. Right. There's that gap in there, and gaps are very, very bad flaws in, in fighting. Any pauses, any hesitations. Well, like um, oh, one of my instructors at Parker would say, you know, he who hesitates, meditates. Meditates. <laughs> <laughs> right? that sound, that's, just, that, that's just it. Ed Parker was uh, notorious for block hit in simultaneous mm -hmm. fashion, which was a good theory. Grandmaster Pi uh, was exceptional with it. Uh, Grandmaster Bill Gregory is phenomenal. Phenomenal using the circular aspect of that. I got a lot. I got a lot from him working on that. Uh, there's a big timeline between hits. That's a, a, a big flaw. Good black belts. They have a good timeline in between hits that we call gaps. Uh, you never hit a man when he's set, okay? And uh, that's one rule. You hit him in transition. In other words, if you can pump fake a man just to react, just this much, you can hit him just when he's moving. Right. Hit him in transition. Uh, they just don't seem to have the contact. Uh, they don't fight relaxed. Uh, most fighters I've seen, um, except the good, the better black belts, they fight stiff like this. Right. They're burning away a lot of energy. Exactly. You're going to be just like water. Nice, nice and loose where you're springy and free. And you've got to have fun with it. Mm -hmm. You can't take it seriously. You've got to have fun with the sparring. Well, that's the whole thing. I mean, whenever a person tenses up, of course, it slows down the speed of this, whatever strikes, hand speed, regardless, it's going to slow down the speed. It burns a lot of energy as well. Mm -hmm. You know, being loose, being fluid is the basis of your mobility. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're stiff like that, you just can't move around. Uh, another, um, they're either too close or too far away from their opponent. They have no judgment of distance. Mm. They just haven't got any conception of bridging the gap, how to explode when you bridge the gap. Mm. Then they use the wrong weapon when they bridge the gap. Mm -hmm. uh, Chuck Norris was very, very famous. I mean, he, uh, he more or less popularized the run step approach to a blitz, mm -hmm. the run step attack. Well, Chuck Norris, he was an exception. He was very, very good. And then people try to imitate that one step, and they get nailed on the way in all the time because they don't realize they're coming with their power hand in. They don't set the person up before they do it. Uh, they pull their kicks and their shots. Uh, that's another terrible error. Instead of punching through or kicking through, they're just, they're just flicking at, right. which, is, which is really, really bad. It's a bad habit to get into. 
They pose after they attack. They'll throw maybe a nice back fist, reverse punch, and then freeze it. They'll pose. The reaction. They pose. Right. That's when they get tagged, right? When they're, mm -hmm. they're posing. Um, the hesitation, indecision, uh, that's a, a major factor. If you're going to do it, just do it. Right. Forward. You know, don't think about it. You can't think. Just do it. Like we uh, talked about, you hesitate, you meditate. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's right. Uh, they don't think before they attack. They just come in with a nice little kick or something. Why don't you just write the guy a note and tell him what you're going to do, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, they don't uh, They don't fake properly. And therefore, they can't properly set up. You can't problem. set the man up if you don't fake. They have no use of the different approaches when they attack. They always either come in linear or, I mean, they're not... They're not fluid. In other words, never attack the same way all the time. Right. And how many tournament fighters you see come in here like this, they even stand like this, and they'll maybe throw like a, a front punch, they just come ah, straight in like that. And read them like a book even before they Exactly, move. exactly. Uh, no ability to monitor their opponent. They have no idea of monitoring. Mm -hmm. uh, a man will tell you how he fights, just by the way he approaches the ring or the street, just the way he walks. Uh, they have no ability to monitor what the person's doing, which is the whole game of fighting. It's just like a game of chess. Uh, lack of explosion across the critical line of distance. Uh, they come in lackadaisy. When you cross that critical line of distance, you've got to explode, because that's where you're bridging the gap, that's where you're setting them in. Uh, they're not attacking by combinations. They'll throw, they'll try and get a point in with, let's say, uh, they'll fake here, they'll just come in with a reverse punch, okay? Mm -hmm. To me, that makes more sense. If you're gonna come in, you come in and then override, right. use different angles, don't go linear. Use circular and use angular approaches. You've got direct angular attacks, indirect mm -hmm. angular attacks. I mean, there, there's a lot of value in that. There's a lot, a lot of value in that. But don't continue approaching the same way because the guy reads you and you'll never, never win that way. You know, you mentioned about direct angular attack, indirect angular attack terms that some, so some of you who may be familiar with, with Bruce Lee and we talked with Boyle really about Joe Lewis, mm -hmm. who was also a student of Bruce well, he Lee. Sure was. Was. There was he sure was. He oh, yeah. sure Into the Joe Lewis fighting system. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, you know, we talk about explosiveness, again, various angular attacks, lineal attacks, and diversifying and com combining these attacks right. and working combinations. What else is there involved in the, in the major points? In the, in the major points of, of fighting, basically, uh, the lack of rhythm and timing is a real, real aspect. In other words, they hit, they have no conception of what the half beat is. Uh, very, very simply to put it, it's almost like dancing. If you are going to attack somebody, and, and to put it in the simplest terms I can, you will go like maybe one, two, one, two, with a punch, okay? And through that entire fight, your timing is one, two, one, two. But you're not going to hit a man that way. You're going to learn how to use rhythm, half beat, where it'll be one, two, one, two, one. That's when you're going to attack a guy on the half beat. I teach my students half beat timing, quarter beat timing, uh, triple timing, uh, static steps, scatter steps, uh, go don't go, switching, uh, foot maneuvers where it makes you look like you're going to throw a kick, but you're really not. Uh, it's all evasion. They have no uh, ability to use evasion. And uh, they, like I said, the timing, uh, they, they, they don't even know what essence is, okay? Um, Master Pi was a great one for essence. The fighting spirit makes it. You go in there with the proper fighting attitude, and even if you lose by a point or two, you still won because you get in there and you hit the guy. I'm not saying draw blood, okay? I mean, I'm a fair competitor and I teach, you know, sportsmanship. But why would you go into a contact sport, even points, without at least trying to crank the guy in the body once? And right. You want the next day the guy at least say, you know, that guy, he got me pretty good. All right, so in, in itself, you're getting something out of it, you know? Right. Well, I know when you, when you do that, I mean, there's no doubt. There's no doubt in your mind or your opponent's mind that you got a particular point or a shot in. Right. Exactly. And, you know, you're not devastating the guy, but you're letting both of you know that hey, I scored I'm the in the hunt. You know, exactly. I mean, uh, that, it's a very, very important aspect, you know, to establish. I believe in setting the pace of the fight. I believe in setting the rhythm of the fight. I like to take control of what's going on in there. Right. Uh, if, if he's going to try and make me circle to my right, I'm going to cut him off and I'm going to switch step him. Mm -hmm. I might fake right, move left, you never know. But I'm not going to do what he wants me to do because he's going to set me up for something. Right. And that's in, in, in generality, those are the most um, popular and the most often 
mistakes people make in, in the fighting. Excellent. Well, there you have it. Some of the common mistakes are made during sparring and fighting. So, I uh, hope you brought your notepad and uh, write it down, think the ideas out, take them with you back to your schools and uh, work on them. Because uh, a lot of important points that we went over today. And uh, we'll be back with more action here on Martial Arts Today. Stay tuned. Well, we're back. We're going to demonstrate some of the various uh, sparring techniques that uh, Shehan Fratella has uh, come up with and utilizes at his uh, studios down in Florida. Shehan Fratella, floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to bridge the gap. We're going to explode when we bridge the gap. It has to be done fast. You can't take time crossing the critical line of distance or you're going to get nailed on your way in. Very, very big weapon that Joe Lewis himself utilized phenomenally was the lead leg kick, okay? You can't take the time to come up, chamber, cock the hip, flick the kick, and come back down. You don't have that much time. We're going to do a step pushing kick. Wherever your foot is, your foot comes right up directly as if you're trying to climb a big step. <clears throat> Just like that. Just step right up. But you can't do it because watch what the man's going to do if you just lead off. He's going to get blocked. Very easy. What we're going to do is we're going to stop right here. Little head shift. Little hand pump. As you pump your hands and you shift your head, you're going to step right on the belt line of the man. You can't go near the knee. You can't go near the joint at all. The judges are going to assume you're trying to get a little kick into the rib area, but it's going to be right here on the upper thigh. So, Stage one of this approach, right off the critical line of distance, you're here, one, right in. That's your first stage. Stage two, you're right in here. Ready? You go, one, this just drops down. Come right across the space with it. You don't have to hit him. It's just a drop shot. Two, three, point in your favor. Putting it all together right from the line, you're in here, ready, fight. In your end. Very, very simple. Very, very simple. What you're doing, you have to explode right in. You've got to explode right in here. Just step. It's one of the easiest things to do. Step, drop down, and strike. Very, very simple. Bridging the gap. Now, a lot of you bigger fellas, a nice, good, rugged man, always charges, always attacks. If I were fighting, Joe in competition, the first thing I do whenever you fight somebody, remember, when you get up to the line, you just don't put your hands up. Say to yourself, what is his advantage over me? Is he bigger? Is he stronger? Is he faster? Is he a good kicker? That's it. As simple as you can get it. Now, I identify Joe's advantage over me. He's got good upper body strength. He's heavier than me. He's stronger than me. What's my best weapon? How do I take away his advantage immediately? Well, when you're working against size and strength, it's very simple. I'm going to use my lead leg not to let him in on me. I'm going to use my speed to offset his force, size, and drive. If that makes any sense to you, then you're going to say, okay, suppose he blitzes you, okay? Very, very simple. Footwork will eliminate any of your problems. Never cross your legs one over the other. Whenever you want to move when you're sparring, if I want to move backwards, very, very simple. I just push off my front legs. Just enough to keep him out of range of hitting me. If I want to advance, I explode from my back leg. If I want to go to my right, I pump off this leg. I want to go this way, I pump off my right leg. You work your footwork in a pattern, one, two, three, and four. Keep your hands up, don't drop your hands. For you big guys that love to come in and blitz, this is a tremendous blitzing technique. You're on the line, you stop with a little fake or any kind of shift. Get his attention. You slide your lead leg forward and reach through him, right in his hands. Whatever his lead weapon is. You reach right through it with a back fist or a jab. This is pop, this is phase one. Right here, that's the reaction you're looking for. As you do your number two sequence, 
Your rear leg slides up and butts your front leg with a reverse punch, low rib cage. That'll back the man up some, then when you spring out, you spring out with a lead hand strike again. Very simply, you start here. One, two, three, and you're through your opponent, through. Let's put this in a realistic situation now. You're gonna say, well, what keeps you from getting nailed when you come in? It's very, very simple. If you come in lazily, he's gonna counter you with his back hand. If I just do something like this, look, pow. He can do lock out, box out, technique me to death with them. But if you explode, now if I'm almost 50 years old and I can do this, all you young guys shouldn't have any problem with it. A real good trick off the line for you fighters. Very, very good trick. When you're on the line against a bigger opponent, tougher, stronger, you need your lead leg. You really need your lead leg. It takes time when you're on the line waiting for the judge to put his hand down to say go. When you're on the line, stay nice and loose. If I want to blast him with a lead leg side kick, I'm going to shift my back leg up, come up, wah, and drive through. Takes time. When I approach the line, they bottle each other, bottle center judge, fighting stance, you up. Now, as I'm in my fighting stance for that split second, what I'm doing is moving around. As I'm moving around, I'm bringing my back leg, sneaking it up to my front foot. Then when he says, go, chill, point every time. You've cut down the time it takes to do this and this into right here. Go. And it's out. Nice. All these little tricks help people spar. Very good. I'll tell you, we've got some fantastic insights into sparring. And we'll be back with more martial arts today. Stay tuned. Well, we've had an incredible time here at Bill Gregory's uh, Kaiju Kimbo Pai alum with uh, Shihan Gino Crotella. You know, it's a really rare experience for you, the audience, to see the various types of techniques that are used in a fighter versus fighter confrontation. You know, a lot of times in martial arts, we learn different self-defense techniques against different types of attacks. But now you've gotten some insights into what it's like when you're squaring off with an opponent and some insights into that one-on-one -on -one confrontation and some of the different aspects that you can utilize in the martial arts. So until next time, uh, this is Joe Rebello for Martial Arts Today saying keep training, work hard, and we'll see you next time on Martial Arts Today.